Charlotte's Web belongs right up there with Huckleberry Finn, and Moby Dick is a classic of American literature. It's a book that goes from generation to generation. It's one you want to share with your kids. This is one of the great children's books. I think every parent, the minute they deliver a child, they should be delivered this book. It is the first book I remember having read to us in school. It was a transformative experience. and I still remember her sitting in that wooden chair in front of the room reading it to us. The first time I actually read Charlotte's Web, we had to read it for school. And then after that, I read it again in the fourth grade because I really liked it. I finally read it in my mid-teens, and I fell in love with it anyway. Um, it spoke to me as a story about loss and the excitement of being alive. Picking it up just a couple of days ago, I was astounded. It, it's an incredible story. The topics are profound and deep and not the superficial, sentimental book I thought it was by any stretch. In 1947, E.B. White was tending a pig on his farm and the pig gets sick and he's heartbroken when the pig dies. And he begins imagining a story in which the pig does not die. One day then, a few months later, he winds up looking up and realizing there's a huge spider web in the barn. And he watches as the spider carefully lays eggs and puts them in an egg sack. And I love this moment. E.B. White takes that little egg case and puts it in his blazer pocket. So in his pocket is the inspiration for what will become the most popular children's book in history. Charlotte's Web is a story about a girl, a pig, and a spider. This young girl, Fern, convinces her father to let her raise this runt pig, who she names Wilbur, and Wilbur's very happy until the word is delivered to him of what his eventual fate will be. Wilbur talks to the other animals, and they tell him, oh yes, here's what's going to happen. You are absolutely going to be killed and turned into bacon. But before he's killed, he befriends a big gray spider named Charlotte, who is very clever and smart and Charlotte pledged to him that she was going to save him. E.B. White manages to keep all this racing because of the suspense of will the pig survive? He had a great idea by opening the book with such a suspenseful Alfred Hitchcock sort of line. It starts with, where's Papa going with that ax? And your hair stands up on end a little bit because you think, that doesn't sound good. It's just very direct and clear. The craftsmanship at a sentence level is just magnificent. You know, there are two books by E.B. White that I cherish. One is Charlotte's Web, and the other is The Strunk and White Guide for Writers. And you see what he talks about in Strunk and White in action here in Charlotte's Web. The clarity of those sentences, the lack of frills, just saying what needs to be said, and creating something more clear and more powerful for its simplicity. The fairgrounds were soon deserted. The sheds and buildings were empty and forlorn. The infield was littered with bottles and trash. Nobody of the hundreds of people that had visited the fair knew that a gray spider had played the most important part of all. It's tight and, and succinct, uh, but it's, it's very rich in its painting of what it was like to, to live on a farm, to go to a country fair. He's got smells, the manure, the uh, sounds of insects, the sounds of the animals in the barnyard. It's third-person omniscient narration, but you feel that White is telling me this story. This man who loves, loves, loves farms and animals and nature, he's telling us the story. It didn't matter where you grow up. If you grow up on a farm, or you grow up in an ice cave, or you grow up in the city. To a little child, this book opens their world to all living creatures. The book was inspired by real animals' natural history. When he started doing scientific research and learned which kind of spider was, was laying the egg case in his barn, he realized that it was going to lay the eggs and die. And he thought, I can't write my way around that. There is death in the book and loss. In the lives of children, one of the greatest moments of anxiety is when children first become aware of the existence of death, and in part, Charlotte's Web is a story about the fear of death. One of the things that children's authors owe to children is honesty. Honesty about how the world works and not sugarcoating it. Look, would you rather a kid growing up and see his grandmother drop dead and fall on the floor? At least he has this book to know that this happens to every living creature. We're all gonna die someday. Charlotte's Web says to children, you will have loss and it may be deep loss and break your heart, 
but you will go on and you will survive and spring will come back around. Charlotte did live a full life and she actually made friends with Wilbur and she had her children. It's not as sad as someone haven't really experienced any of the joys of life. I think the greatest theme in Charlotte's Web is friendship and what you do for each other. Charlotte's loving friendship with Wilbur and the love that Wilbur has for Charlotte are really the emotional backbone of the book. I wish I had a friend as good as that spider. She didn't think of herself once. Her love for another human being or pig or animal, whatever you want to call it, came first. It just teaches you love and compassion for every living thing. Everyone should read this book. I think people talk more about why Charlotte's Web appeals so much to so many children. But millions of adults have bought the book for themselves, and you encounter so many people who go, oh, Charlotte's Web, God, I love that book. Children's books related to the, the Western canon of literature aren't even considered for the most part. If the world were fair, then a book like Charlotte's Web would absolutely stand well within the canon. I do think Charlotte's Web does get overlooked. There is an opinion of children's books not being at the same level of an adult book. The Charlotte's Web just holds up as a phenomenal piece of writing, not just children's literature, but just literature. I think the book has resonated so much and adults are responding because the story moves them or breaks their heart uh, or reminds them of their childhood. But I know a lot of people who read Charlotte's Web and reread it simply because it's on their list of one of the 10 best written novels they can think of.